Welcome back to another episode, everyone. Hopefully those of you who were at Gen Con had a great time and are now home safe and sound with no hint of con crud. And guess what? Amelia's back too. I'm back. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much to everyone who said hi to me while I was there. Um, I had an excellent time and it was really good to put faces to some of the names that I've seen. If you want to hear about my Gen Con adventures, I recorded a recap episode with my friend Jude. Ooh. And you can find that on the One Shot Secret Archive. Ooh. If I know, right? Uh, if you don't have access to it, you can head over to the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash one shot podcast. And if you support the network at the $5 per month level, you will get access to the Secret Archive, which includes this fantastic bonus episode and all kinds of other cool stuff. Oh, man, I can't wait to, to listen to that one. That's going to be awesome. I've been so excited. I know. It's real good. It's real good. We talk about fish butts. It's real good. <laughs> Fantastic. And also, we have a Discord channel where you can come and hang out with us uh, and tell us about your exciting character concepts. You can also talk about cool projects that you're working on or even tell us about your own trip to Gen Con if you'd like. You can find us at discord.charactercreationcast.com. Because I was gone last week, we didn't get to read a review. And yeah. honestly, listening to that episode without a review was like really sad. It really was. It was. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. This review is titled Diverse Insights to Games. And it is from Renee, who is GM of Fate and the Fable Maidens. Woo! Woo! I did not know how much I would love tabletop games when I first played D&D. In fact, I hated D&D to start out. And once I was coaxed back to the table, I was intimidated by learning the game. And once I learned it, I was intimidated to try other RPGs. Enter this podcast. Because this focuses on character creation, it offered me unique insights into the mechanics of the very diverse tabletop RPGs. It helped hook my interest and reel me in. Now I've tried so many more games than D&D and loved them all. This podcast helped inspire me to try more and overcome the intimidation I felt, and I'm so grateful for that. Oh, thank you, Renee. <laughs> I got to meet Renee at Gen Con, and we hugged, oh, and it was good. I know. You, are you jealous? You are making me beyond jealous right now. I know. Because, I know. oh, she is yes. the best, and yes. I love their actual play so much. Like, every single episode brings me so much joy. I know. That so, one's on my list of stuff to listen to, because, like, yeah. people need to just stop making good podcasts. Like, they're not it's really too far rude. Right now, but it's really rude that people keep making all of these good podcasts. I know. <laughs> That's why yeah. I am determined to make a really garbage podcast because I don't want to be a burden on other people. <laughs> <laughs> so, th thanks for listening to Character Creation Cast, our garbage podcast. <laughs> yes, with all that out of the way, here's more garbage <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Hey, Senda. On the last episode of Character Creation Cast, we were in the middle of creating some redeemable operatives in the Headspace RPG by Mark Richardson. Senda chose to work on a white coat. Bill is planning out a runner. Amelia is getting ready to blow things up with her Ronin. And I am trying my best to create a by-the-book tech. We're picking up right where we left off last time. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. All right, cool. All right, so the next one um, should go um, a little faster because we're now uh, at step five is choose a subculture. Yay! Yay! So we're going to choose a subculture, and then along with that, um, I believe, yep, Oh, we'll do subculture first, and then number six is going to be to choose a look. If you want, I can jump yeah, in free. while everybody's looking. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna pick um, subculture oh, neon. Nice. Uh, so um, charger is very oh, I charger. Know, I'm gonna be neon. Well, not, not. <laughs> it's okay. Well, it's okay. Like subcultures, oh, yeah. you can totally yeah, yeah. overlap on. Charger is like all about the flash. Like charger is all about like 
like crowds and bright like he is um the person that when he's not doing jobs like he is like he's got his car you know at like one of those you know like one of those like underground you know um events where they like show them all off so like all of his cars are always flashy and that kind of thing so like you know flynn's like he leans on flynn a lot to help kind of you know trick nice. out his vehicles okay um i've got angel um if you guys are ready to hear it i am also neon um and my eyes are no white so but what they actually oh, wait you're d- d- that's that's oh that's, that's six. You're right sorry <laughs> i'm also Just, neon you're neon because i like to glow <laughs> you're also you're also really <laughs> rough at following directions <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> there are times i'm better not tonight apparently yes <laughs> um i Ryan, went with the one that matched what i was going for the most and i went with corporate because i i like to follow the rules Ooh, okay Super. of course you did yeah of course he's you playing did. lawful good <laughs> no no neutral good kind of <laughs> a pri- mm-hmm. previously Your lawful. nonsense <laughs> no i i think i i chose this one mainly because I did some underhanded things while working for the corporation because I didn't want to rock the boat uh, and I, you know, didn't want to die. And so instead of, uh, you know, standing up for myself or or finally leaving uh, for a while, I, I just put up with it and followed the rules. That's the main reason probably why I chose Corbett. Plus, I think he he likes to keep himself, you know, clean and kind of unassuming and he doesn't he doesn't really fit in with a lot of the other techies that are out there yeah sure he's the suit <laughs> makes sense to me all right no uh, amelia Amelia. <laughs> i am gonna go with drifter awesome cool all right and so now we can just now we can go right into looks uh which is part six and uh Nia, and so Charger has uh, neon green eyes. Uh, he, he has no hair. Uh, he's he's got a sh- shaved head, of which he has some digital yes. tattoos upon. So they kind of morph and change and things like that. Um, and his clothes uh, have light panels. I think that most of his clothes look like outfits from uh, the second Tron movie. So they've got like neon blue lighting <laughs> on like the cuffs and the sleeves and. You know, like even like even like when his jacket is unzipped, there's like neon lighting underneath. So it just, oh, I love it. you know, it's just yes. got some glow to it at all times. Amazing. Like everything he wears is black, but trimmed with like blue LED. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like like everything is backlit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, even you know, even under his like under his jacket is backlit kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, and his online avatar um, looks like a. Um, Looks, you know, um, actually looks a little bit like the Tron characters um, with the, you know, with the neon lines in them. And it kind of looks like he has like a, a motorcycle racing cool. suit. Perfect. Yeah. All right. I'll go ahead and do mine. Mm-hmm. How about that? I'm going to go with an eye patch. Nice. Yeah. And then what do I do with my hair? I think the hair is going to be kind of all over the place. Like I've never owned a hairbrush in my life. And then... I think clothing will go with like we'll go with like thrifty like but like not nice things that you found at a thrift store like like you went dumpster diving. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I, can my avatar just be like the Twitter egg? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that sounds great. Perfect. That's what I want. That's amazing. My avatar to just be the Twitter All egg. All right. <laughs> so for me, as the corporate, I went with uh, tired eyes. Yeah, hard working, hard working, and also in front of a computer all the time, which is definitely not good for the eyes. Mm-hmm. My hair is uh, trimmed and and kind of groomed. I'm gonna say I've got a a full beard uh, that I keep relatively short, and my body is uh, mostly unassuming, just Joe average person. But I wear overtly expensive clothing. Because, you know, when I'm on missions, I want to look cool. 
you know, while I'm uh, doing all my stuff. So I, I kind of uh, throw exactly to make up for the fact that you can't do parkour. So I I, w- I would rather <laughs> uh, you know make up for that by at least having some expensive clothing on that looks cool than uh, you know anything else. That's the reason you can't <laughs> do parkour. You don't I could, it. but you know, there's a, there's, there's a five hundred dollar suit. That's what you keep insisting. Guys. Seriously, I don't believe you could have done it anyway. My expensive pants are like a little too tight, but it looks so badass when yeah. I jump like from thing to thing with my neon blue. Oh man, you leave light trails. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. That's awesome, especially yeah. at night, right? Like. You're like a self-contained. I can brain. turn it off if I need to. <laughs> well, but, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I don't like oh, I wish wait. I chose neon. That's pretty sweet, though. Um, and then my <laughs> avatar. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a just a cartoon depiction of myself, but a little more generic. But like wearing a <laughs> like a suit and tie or whatever, instead of my you know flashier expensive stuff. <laughs> it's. It's made it, it's made it, it's made to make your... yeah. you look more trendy. So it's the cartoon exactly. dressed up version of you, as opposed to the really expensive exactly. dressed up version of you. It's supposed to make Ugh, you look I more relatable. This. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was it was like focus grouped for hours. We were all really sick of hearing about it. Good. Yeah, I think that that's all, all of us. You? Now, how about yourself, Cinder? Yeah, so I am also neon, like Phil, and um, or like Charger, and uh, so my eyes have no whites, and um, so they're just basically that full color, um, but the full color that they are is kind of like one of those mood rings, so they they like change color as my mood shifts, and they like go through those dark purples and greens and like all the way up to nice. the gold colors. And then my hair is light emitting. So what it is, it's it's like long and white, but it will react. It, it kind of, it doesn't, it's not super, it doesn't react a lot to gravity. Like it's very light. So it kind of just floats around and emits light. And that's how I got my name, oh, nice. Angel. Um, right? Because it, uh, it gives me this very like halo effect because mm-hmm. it's just kind of, it's it's acting like it's underwater oh, all the time. Awesome. Right, but it's glowing. Oh, I love it. It sounds it's a little, little like your Starcross <laughs> AI. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. Did I accidentally just recreate that character? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's okay. Keep okay, going. carrying on. Um, and then so body, I um, I took patterned. So if you um, if you get close to me, basically, you can see like. Um, all over all of my skin is just this faint iridescent like snake like little scale pattern oh, just like all over me and it's not it's not like it's not like i am cheetah print but it's like this subtle like everything is just a little bit kind scaly, of like the uh the superhero cool. suits in uh like the new superman and and whatnot where it, it kind of has like the the checkered patterns, but yeah, like a little yeah, scale yeah. pattern kind of thing to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that. <laughs> <Very cool. laughs> yeah, but basically, it's still like kind of like it's still my color. But what happens is like when the light shifts and stuff, you can see it kind of reflecting off of basically like the edges oh, cool. of the pattern, right? I love it. And then um, my clothes are also color changing. So what tends to happen is that my eyes and my clothes match at any given oh, sweet. moment. Like my, I have like a, a lab coat basically, but it just, it keeps time with my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah. And then my avatar is like, oh, I know it's really shocking. It's just like this fluorescent, iridescent, glowing oh. halo. <laughs> I thought a panda was going to come in there at some point. No, she's angel, <laughs> oh, <okay>. not panda. <laughs> yeah. That's everyone, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, number seven, choose your disciplines. So now going back to the character sheet, um, above your operator skills, um, assign the following scores to your six disciplines. Plus two, plus one, zero, minus one, minus two. 
Discipline will tell you which emotion your operator is good at dealing with and which they're not. So put your highest score in whichever emotion you want to have confidence in controlling and your lowest score in the emotion that gets the better of you. This is really interesting because you don't roll for your own skills. Yep. Yep. That's the thing that I was going to mention is you don't have to do this based on what you want to be able to do good skills for, for Mm -hmm. your skills. That part's taken care of. So you do get to do it much more from a character perspective. I guess if you wanted to min-max this game, you would be looking at all of the other mm-hmm. people's skills and deciding what you want to be good I think, at. <laughs> yeah, I think what I would probably do then is is just select what I think my character would feel and see how it lands. That's that's really mm-hmm. interesting. Exactly. Wait, so hold on. What are we... P- I'm having trouble finding what I'm looking for here. Uh, so on the character sheet, it's um, it's the ones, it's the disciplines. It's right above the operator skills. It's rage, grief, fear, need, and ego. And That's then, right. yep. And then right underneath that, it'll it'll give you the stat line, which is plus two, plus one, zero, minus one, minus two. I can go while we're uh, while everybody else is picking, yep. if that'll. Mm-hmm. So um, I picked a plus two for rage. Um, I have a good control of my uh, anger. I don't get angry very often. I'm pretty uh, cool. I took a minus one to grief. I have some problems feeling guilty about stuff, which is, I think, how I got tangled up with Angel, like, trying to help me in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, It's also why I haven't actually solved any problems with Angel, because that's about as far as I can deal with it. Uh, Fear, I have at zero. I'm um, no less, I'm no better or worse for controlling my, um, controlling my fear. Um, I have a plus one for need. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good about, I'm pretty good about being selfless. And like doing like doing good for the better of the group, uh, and I have a minus two at ego as both a neon and somebody who does stuff like drives real fast and parkour. Like I I I got a really good I got I have a really good opinion about myself, and it gets the better of me constantly. Yep. All right. Um. I took um. So Angel has um rage also at plus two because. I am actually really good at controlling my anger feelings. I've been to a lot of training (laughs) for this, right, as a psychologist. Um, Mm -hmm. I have grief at a minus two. One of the things I'm not good at dealing with is is the grief um, and, like, basically the the, the, um, what I'm going for with that stat um, is that um, I'm not good at dealing with all of the terrible things happening in the world around us. And so the the grief part um, and me having a, an inability to handle it well um, is actually what I'm seeing is the driving force that got me out of the corporations because I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like, people need to be helped. We can't, We have to fix this, right? Mm-hmm. I have fear to plus one again. Like, I am a psychologist and I am good at controlling my fear because I have been trained in handling negative emotions in theory, but that just happens to be one of the ones I'm better at. My need is a minus one because I am not always good at controlling my desires for things. Um, And my ego is at a zero because I know that I'm good at my job. And I know, like, I came up with the actual cure. Whether they actually produce it or not, I did. But at the same time, like, I'm not, I don't have a super inflated idea of myself, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I can go. Yeah, uh, so I put rage at plus two. Because like Charger, I'm able to to handle and temper my uh, rage uh, whenever something would come up. I, I feel like I'm a fairly chill individual. Grief is at minus two because I cannot stand uh, losing friends. And uh, it really kind of kills me uh, when uh, confronted with the sort of situation that would force me to grieve. Oh gosh, too bad we know, already right? lost two people. That will have no effect <laughs> on my character whatsoever. I'm sure it'll be 100%. fine. <laughs> it's okay. It They're won't come stuck up in our heads. It. Yeah, Forever. fear. I put it at zero <laughs> because uh, it's basically a, don't really uh, let it get a hold of me, but I don't really have a good handle on it either. So just kind of neutral on that one. Need is plus one because I, um. <laughs> yeah, because I, like I want people you. to like me, but um, it doesn't, you know, define me, so I have a little bit of a handle on it. Uh, but ego uh, is at minus one because um, 
I know I'm good and I want everybody to know that I'm good. And, and if, uh, uh -huh. if, you know, it's right. kind of proven that I falter at points, then I have a, a hard time with that. Right. It must really mess you up that I keep refusing oh, to yeah. use your tech. Oh, yeah. Hardcore, yeah. <laughs> and um, another reason I chose Ego as the minus one is because I'm not good at parkour. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real blow exactly. to your, That's a real blow to your ego on that one. Awesome. All right. Um, good. Oh, yep. Amelia. Amelia. Yep, I got you <laughs> Stop skipping Jeez, me. Phil. <laughs> I somehow got the order messed up in my head, like somehow Ryan is at the end, but Ryan's not at the end. Um, so I put my rage at negative one, because I think probably not great at anger management. <laughs> <laughs> um, I put my grief at, at zero. I think I'm I'm pretty pretty even. Like I've been through enough at this point that Yeah, you either get it or you don't by now. Right, exactly. Um, fear I put at plus two. I spend a lot of time diffusing bombs and uh, <laughs> self-medicating, so it's probably fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Need I put at negative two, because I need everybody to know that I'm really good at this and that I'm not going to mess up which wire to cut. And <laughs> Except for that one time that you did, because that's how the car blew up. No, I just <laughs> missed that bomb entirely. Okay. I just didn't even know it was there. <laughs> um, and then ego I put at plus one um, ideally people don't necessarily know that I'm if I've done my job well you should not know that I was there or that cool. I did anything at all, all right, yeah. I think that's everyone for that awesome cool mm -hmm. alright our next step is uh, step eight right. is the ghost operators so um, we so headspace was designed to work efficiently with a group uh, a full group of five operators mm -hmm. out of a total of six, uh, which gives the players a breadth of different skills to choose from, um, and then you fill in um, the missing one um, with you. You're basically gonna you know these people died, and in our case, since we have a four player um, a four player crew, uh, two have died. Yep. Um, and they're the two books that we did not choose. The Handler uh, so and the, the Investigator. Infiltrator, yeah. Infiltrator. Infiltrator, yep. Fix that in post. And we only get one of their skills. So we have to pick, like, we need to name them, and then we need to pick, like, which skill of theirs hmm. um, stayed with us. Um, and I think we might also have to, and we also have to give that, um, we also have to attribute that skill emotion. to a... Um, Do we have to, to answer the question for that skill? I'm looking. Okay. Uh, no. No, we don't have to. We don't have to name. We don't have to answer the question because the questions are really the ones that pull into the players. But we should. Yeah. But we should talk about what happened to them. So, of the infiltrator skills, martial arts, security, and stealth. Which one they're do we want to retain good, as a group? Which is so difficult. No, they're all really good. Um, my temp. Temptation would be I would, stealth. Yeah, I was leaning that towards was that one. one too. I was thinking of as yeah, well. Yeah, me too. Okay, so we're keeping stealth, and and we should we can really quick. Let me jump to the investigators' uh, playbook and ask the infiltrator the infiltrator's playbook. And how about um, uh, how about this is Razor? Our That's the name I was gonna pick too. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Okay. Okay. And what uh, emotion do we want to uh, um, what emotion do we want to put on uh, on stealth? Um, we don't have a lot of grief. Yeah. There's only one we rage. Like there's only two, one. Though. Yeah. Well, we have two. Well, we have the handler and the infiltrator, so we could give one of them grief mm -hmm. and one of them rage. I mean, I feel like for a sneaky type, rage mm -hmm. is like maybe not a good emotion to keep. Well, off. I'm so sneaking so angry <laughs> right now. <laughs> So well, so there's two parts to this, right? There's, um, if we had a GM in this case, um, we would describe, mm -hmm. um, how this person died and then, and like kind of who they were. And then the GM would actually assign the, um, the emotion since we don't have a GM in this scenario. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So maybe let's go through and, and talk about what happened and then right, we can pick okay. something based on that, right? Aside based that. on that actual story. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. so Razor. Who was Razor? Oh, 
what what gender do we think that Rays are identified as? Let's start there so we oh, know I what pronouns. She. Yeah, I was she? thinking she as well. I think she. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so she was I feel like she was a transhuman. Okay. And okay. her yeah. her thing was like constantly updating her body and cybernetics to be better at infiltrating. Ooh. All right. Right. I like okay. that. I like that. Greater. Mhm. So, how do we think that she like what happened? How did we how did we lose Razor? I think we lost I think we lost her on on the job. Like it seems like a lot of things are coalescing <laughs> to that job where we tried to get the um, We tried right. to get the we tried to get the cure mm-hmm. and we failed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um I think that uh because she had martial arts. Yep. I think that at some point she got caught up fighting corporate guards and got like taken down. Like they um you know, like they overwhelmed her, like as she was, yeah. you know, kicking a whole bunch of ass. Like somehow, they like overran her. And, Is she the um, reason we escaped? So, like she she held them off. Yeah, I'm like yes. I was gonna say I, I think so that they were all. Focused I'm imagining on her. her actually holding the door to yeah. the lab, like as as Kurosawa swoops in and saves yeah. you, Flynn, and like gets you both out of there, like firing bullets at random behind her and takes out Kill Chandra. There we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so rage <laughs> actually so with that description, rage actually um rage would work might fine. Work with it's that, like her right? leftover yeah. emotion attached to the skill that we chose. That's really interesting. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean I feel like either grief or rage yeah, would work I think really well. Either like, of them really would. I mean, because like grief too, like watching the rest of us run away right. while she's and still like in while there, she like... literally gets like taken down mm-hmm. and can't get out. Yeah. I don't know I where, think... what are you guys feeling? I can go either way on it. I'm yeah, really, I'm thinking like, Rage is it, yeah. a little bit more in my book uh, because uh, she would have less grief because she knows that she's saving our lives. Right. I, I think Rage is good. Yeah. Or does she have Rage because, like, or we are leaving, leaving her behind? <laughs> Not noticing that she's, like, yeah. getting or, overwhelmed. Or did and... she self-sacrifice? Yeah. I don't know, because I feel like I like the idea of having to, like, deal later on with the emotional complications of, like, using that skill and, like, what you get is, like, oh, her anger. Yeah, uh, okay. that's amazing. I think that, like, oh, I, like, oh you're sneaking in now? <laughs> what about the time you snuck out? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, oh, now, now you, you need me? me? Okay. I okay. see how you are. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That is like, very yeah, harsh. Oh, yes. my God. Oh man, that would be so fun to play. <laughs> Ryan, that's how yes. you play this game. <laughs> Raise the stakes. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So then we've got our handler. So somebody pick a name for our handler. Washington. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah, okay. I'm done. Okay. And which of the um so of the skills, there's coax. So um that is, you know, that is definitely the the all around social skill. Um, there's contingency, which is, it's the skill you use when things go sideways, that you have a backup plan. So, you know, you use contingency, like when, uh, when the inevitable happens and the op goes sideways, you're never without a backup plan or a substitute for a malfunctioning yet vital piece of gear. So contingency is the ability to plan and observation is, um, your ability to spot stuff. So which one of those skills do we want to retain? Uh, in our shared consciousness. I'm leaning towards coax or contingency, personally. How are you guys feeling? Okay. Yeah, I'm I was leaning between contingency, contingency and observation. No, I like well, contingency. Contingen- yeah, let's good. do contingency. That is that's the overlapping like. one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we need to assign a, um, we need to assign, well, we need to decide what happened. Yeah, we need to tell a story uh, yeah. and then assign a stat. Yeah. <laughs> So did we also lose Washington on this op, this this ill fated operation? Man, it was a bad night. That we yeah. have to have, like we have to have lost them at that yeah. point. Is Washington how we got out because of Washington's contingency Ooh. plan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So his. Con- but we never realized his contingency oh. plan was a sacrifice. Was a suicide plan. Oh yeah. man. And maybe grief. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what exactly did he do? I, I think his plan was to like his his plan was oh he drew security off like he set off like a set of alarms by running off in a different direction, um and we were all able to get like out 
but he like drove them he drove them deeper into the complex right but there's mm-hmm. no way he could get back out can i propose <laughs> <laughs> a secondary mm-hmm. idea good yeah i'm i like that one a lot so i'm happy to go with that but i'm having this thought about um if his contingency plan was like well i have to seal this door and so he he, we, like everybody got out the door except that um except that Razor was still holding them off at the other the door at the other end of the lab for us to get out the to the actual outside and he went last out the door and when we turned around to make sure that he, it, he was behind us he was closing the door in our face and then sealing it and then it like exploded and like so permanently shut the door but me, got him in the process let me tack uh, yes. let me tack one onto it <laughs> So the way to get the lab to seal so that it can't oh, be opened yes. is that he broke the contagion. Oh. And when the contagion went off, oh. it sealed the lab so that oh, it couldn't even God. be overridden. Yes. So like, yeah, like it was the a safety yes. protocol. Right. Um but in oh. doing it, he knew he yeah. was gonna Evan die Washington. from the contagion. Yeah. <laughs> oh <nice. laughs> Yes, that one. And like our last, our last, our last um, images of him are that we're running down the hallway. We turn and look back, and he's on the other side of the door. And there's this like vial with this green liquid right, that he like breaks it. open. Yeah, we can see him through the safety glass with the right. Oh, <sighs> yep, that's Washington. what happened. Yeah, no kidding. We didn't deserve you. <laughs> Washington's our bombshell. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's right. Uh-huh. He was the best. He of was us. the best of us. He was the oh, only one who was okay. truly good. Yeah. So that has to be. Oh grief, God. Right? Yeah. Yes, I think that's such. Yeah, a it is. Oh really man. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh. it is. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. <laughs> you guys, I'm really proud of us. <laughs> uh huh. Nice job stepping that one up. That yeah, was I'm really like, good. he can't just run in. Like, we gotta. He's gotta like sacrifice. <laughs> it's good. It's fine. It's fine. I told you guys. <laughs> Washington. Oh, man. I All knew right. we were going to get there. Number nine. Uh-huh. Yes. Ryan, oh, define your regrets. This is your moment. <laughs> <laughs> define- you promise. <laughs> oh, define <man>. your regret. <laughs> now, what this does in the game, besides, um, besides that you carry a terrible secret, is that uh, once per session, you may reveal your regret via a flashback to turn a six minus on a headspace Ooh. move into a ten. And then you can create a new regret and provide or provide more details uh, to an existing one. So this is this is a way for you to get a success at a critical moment of the game. But in doing so, you have to confess to the group, uh, okay. a, you know, a regret. Yeah, a terrible, terrible thing that you did. This is your succeed at a cost. Right. Yes. Should we let me I let have, me have... let me say for the purposes of character creation, since we're not actually going to play this game, should we create our regrets yes. and then share them? Hundred percent. I, I think yeah. we should. I I have I I've known mine. <laughs> oh boy! Part way through character creation, <laughs> mine was really simple. Mine is like, what do you regret doing? Like, um, you're haunted by an action which um, you took in the name of the corporation. Which corporation secret is this uh, regret tied to? And then, what do you regret doing? Let's see, where... I I can I can do mine because mine came up emergent from play. Right, I think mine did too. So. Uh, my regret is that I drove the contagion into what is now the quarantine oh, zone. Yep. And that's the thing that I'm like super guilty about. Like that disease that broke out, like I'm the reason it broke out in the quarantine zone because I trucked I trucked mm. that stuff in. Where are the corporations in here? Why can I not find them? Mm, let me see if I can find them for you real quick. Yeah. Yep, yep. Hang on. I think it's 197 for set yeah, setting one Vancouver aftermath yeah, Vancouver is aftermath. um which I think is the one we've been That's kind of we've been talking, talking about, about all yeah. along. Yep. So trauma 1 is probably Yeah, that's what the, like uh, that's what I was looking for. Trauma 1 is the Trauma 1 I think is the medical bio. Yeah. So you worked for trauma 1 or, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, I did jobs for like I was driving. That's probably I was driving why fun. I was assigned to watch you and your family, because uh, you were, and then yep. you got out. Yes, yes, 
Yeah, because I dr- I drove all that in, and then when word came, like when the news broke about the outbreak, you know, I yeah. was like, oh god, like I I did that. Yep. So um, so my regret is actually that um, I found the cure. Oh, let me back this up because we also created the disease then. Did you create the yeah. disease? Yeah. So I am now thinking that I created oh. the disease and I was I so I I created the disease first. And then I was like, "Oh god, I have to create a cure for this." And then they took the parts of my cure that treated the symptoms and implemented them, so they are using my cure designs basically to continue to milk money from people um, to try and set up the situation where they can just, you know, create people who are um, in constant need of medication that are constantly paying them, right? Yeah, they, they basically dumbed down your, you, they dumbed down your right. cure. Right, it doesn't actually fix mm-hmm. it anymore. Um, but so they, right. they're they using, they're using, they, they both implemented the disease and now they're using it to make money, right? So they're using all of my research uh-huh. for terrible, terrible things. Love it. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> what, if, uh, what if my regret then is I invented the like release mechanism that the that oh oh man oh. we're all complicit in this one thing you can do something else I mean, I mean, no it's wonder... great but you can do something else oh no it's it's awesome yep. that's how it aerosol yeah it was oh, like God. this very specific containment thing that was allowed it to transport. But once it got to where it needed to go, then it triggered and released the the aerosol disease upon the population. <laughs> Good job, Brian. Good job. Yep. Good job. Look at yep. you, complicit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I killed a lot of people. Feel good about it. <laughs> you and us both. I'm having a really hard We've time like, figuring out how so my stuff. Here's here's the thing. It doesn't have to fit with this no. particular thing no. at all. <laughs> it could be totally, totally I, different. No, but I want it to. Literally, everything like, could be I, completely disconnected. Right. So, but but there's but there's you know more pieces of it. Like so, there's there's the part where you could be complicit in helping to cause the earthquake that caused the tsunami, which left all the areas devastated before the disease came in. Um, like there's there's more parts that you can build off of that are still kind of part of the same disaster situation. I think I want to say that I had something to do with sort of destroying the infrastructure of mm-hmm. the cities, making oh, the response a lot yeah. more difficult. Oh, so it incubated oh, better. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. We are we are now terrible we're people. <laughs> mm. yeah. Now we're all terrible people oh, yeah that's all of yeah, us right? that's all that's... of us yeah Oof. okay step 10 we now uh go one block underneath it we're going to define your drive uh so each operator will also have a drive a greater goal um of dealing with their regret um when it eventually is revealed in play um and so um you can either base your drive on vengeance or redemption <laughs> Well, we know what Ryan's saying. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna straight up say that um, I think that I have to seek redemption because I created this. I literally created mm-hmm. this disease. Like, I am gonna go with vengeance because I am furious that like I don't think I was told I was driving the um, contagion in. I think I was told I was mm-hmm. I was delivering supplies, right. and so I am I want I want vengeance on trauma one because. They um they duped me into um they duped me into doing. Oh this. man, my redemption was knowing when the cure was going to be done so that we could go in and get it, and then we <laughs> failed. <laughs> now I have to recreate it with no laboratory. Oh, oh man. no! There's your redemption. You're gonna rebuild. I'm gonna the rebuild cure. the cure. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna pick vengeance. Um, I, I think probably for for similar reasons as Phil in that like I felt like I got used as a pawn in Mm -hmm. this grand scheme I'm not pleased about it maybe you have a list of the people who made you do it just saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) maybe Mm -hmm. there's a list great there's gotta be a list uh and we we also will create um in addition to ourselves 
Uh, we will also create a redemption or vengeance for uh, our ghosts. Both of oh, our, interesting. Um, both of our ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, think, I'm going to uh, go Ryan, with redemption for my drive because We're all really I know, shocked. right? But <laughs> but it's because I knew exactly what I was doing when I was creating that mechanism. Yeah. And I was doing mm -hmm. it because I was like, I have to follow the rules. I have to do this. And I knew it was going to hurt people, and I still did it anyway. So I need to figure out a way to either uh, counteract my design so that they can't use it again. Or to use that same design right, to... to design something. That works oh, this year. yeah. Hey, I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that. But you don't trust But I don't trust tech. your tech, <laughs> damn it. There's a story in there. <laughs> we'll all work through uh -huh. <laughs> We're going to have to I, evolve. <laughs> I love that. Okay, yeah. Okay, I I need to use my design to design something that'll disperse the cure. Yep. Nice. Okay, Um. and, and, the, and technically the GM, um, the GM during this part would create the... um the drives for the ghost operators because they get kind of they their motivations mm -hmm. for future play. So um yeah. I mean if you want to we can do them. If not we can move on to um to step eleven. I don't know if they make a lot of sense for us to do because Yeah. Okay. Well I mean that's fine. We'll have like our GM our GM, our GM is gonna do that. Handles what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what happens yeah. to uh both Razor mm -hmm. and and uh and Washington. Okay. So step up. <laughs> so yeah. here it is. <laughs> that is yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want to know what mm -hmm. their drives are. <laughs> Tell us. It's at Creation Cast on Twitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, what else do we need to do here? Okay. Um step eleven, choose edges. Yes. Um on the mm -hmm. next page of your playbook are your edges. And um runners get two edges. So you're gonna pick um two of them and they're like feats um they're like something they're like they're like i guess they're kind of like feats they're like something cool um mm. that your character has oh i get to also pick a place that i work that provides me with nice. resources and i get and to pick a drone but i have no idea what this means uh yep all now, right, at this mine. point i'm not really sure what all these pluses mean oh okay so so like plus so like like for instance I have a machine pistol right two harm close mm -hmm. near plus loud plus suppressive, um so those are narrative tags, and so they're in addition like they're the they're the um they're the additional narrative tags like about my machine pistol right so my um I, and there's a lexicon of these like in the gear chapter so loud is obviously descriptive which is like when you fire off the machine pistol like there's no hiding it okay like. It's loud. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I have, um, uh, what is it? Uh, like my, if I picked the Aerodyne, um, then it gets mm -hmm. plus flight, right? So it can fly. And you can actually, those are all in the book. Um, all of the tags show up in the gear section. Um, and there's a bunch of them. So gear starts, uh, okay. gear is in chapter four. So yeah. Yeah, so I have one that's like bulky, I have loud. Yep, bulky One's means the item takes up dangerous. a lot of space. Okay, this makes a lot more yep. sense now. Yeah, they're they're um they're common and powered by the apocalypse games. They tend to um they tend to be both uh they tend to have two functions. They're descriptive, um, and they're a very they're shorthand for telling you things about the item. Um and then often a lot of games will use like a lexicon so that that word also has some like potential rules attached to it. Um, so like I have suppressive for my machine pistol and that allows me to make an area attack using the machine pistol instead of just shooting at one person, but okay. I think it expends my ammo. There's questions to answer with my edges here. I know mine too. <laughs> and my brain is like, one that... well, we are, we are nearly, yeah. we are nearly at the end. Um, we are just a few steps away. I can, I can start with, um, edges. Yeah, go for it. Okay, I took uh, two. I took two kind of easy ones, but I thought they would be useful for our group. So I took uh, the headspace vehicle link, so I can remotely pilot my ride. Which my nice. ride is the torque truck. The thing's like a tank. It's uh, armor three. It holds four passengers. It has storage. Like we we like it's um. I mean, mine's flashy because it's got you know cool aftermarket you know work done on it. But um, you know, this thing will drive through pretty much anything. 
but yeah, so I can I can run that thing like remotely. So like when we're on a job, I can have it like meet us places and things like that. Perfect. Uh, and the other thing I picked uh, because I know the city, um, I picked a sprawl safe house. So I have a very secure and well supplied compound uh, for when we need to lay low or hide an asset, and that is actually located. That is actually located above a uh, club in one of the popular neighborhoods. So um, the club, it, it, it's too hard for any corporate corporation to hit because um, it's like in the middle of like the most popular area of the city. And it's super hard to track anything in there. Like drones and stuff get like drones and stuff get lost mm-hmm. in all the neon and, and, you know, holograms and stuff like that. So nice. um, it's that, visually that leads in perfectly with what I chose because I chose oh, cool. Ice Ice Baby. And I recognize that the best offense is a good defense, so my personal cyberspace defenses are untouchable. Um, I maintain a highly secure online nice. fortress, and I have to say, where is it physically located? Oh, yeah, cool. I'm going to put, it, put in it, it in the safe house. house. Uh, Cause now, physically, all the neon and all that stuff gets in the way, but also, they can't hack it. At all. So I did nice. that, and then I put, uh, there I fixed it as my other edge and temporary repairs come naturally to me and I can add a plus tag on a vehicle or a piece of gear that lasts for one session. Anytime I use my engineering skill. Yeah. I thought that would be pretty helpful. Um, and then I got to pick a drone. So I picked a Vespa drone, which is kind of a tiny stealthy sort of, uh, reconnaissance drone, I guess. I didn't think it felt good to have a drone that, was meant for killing for my character. Makes sense. So I actually want to tie mine into your safe house too, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Because one of mine is (laughs) Welcome to the Gun Show. You maintain maintain a major arsenal of weapons, ammunition, and explosives. It is highly illegal. Where is it? And who do you pay to keep it safe? Um, So I am going to say that it is in the safe house. The safe house is really like, good. you know, the safe house like is amazing. Fort yeah. Knox of yeah. It's the really city. good. My goodness. And then one of the other ones I want to pick is the B team, a team of local heavy hitting mercenaries owe you big. Who are they? Nice. And why do they still owe you? Um, but I want to say whatever this club is that it's located above. Um, I think it's run by some sort of like mob crime family type thing. Um and that's the favor. I is the, dig it. They keep the Very safe house cool. secure. Okay. Um, so this is a thing that ties into my regret, right? So my location that I got to choose um, is where my laboratory is. So I have, um, I have a cramped and impoverished but essential uh, clinic that I run basically on the streets. So it's um, just outside of the quarantine zone. Um, and it's basically, it's run on a shoestring and a lot of the people who come in can't pay me. Um, but I'm known as like, even though things might not work, I'm also the best chance of like something actually maybe working. Right. Mm -hmm. So people come anyway and then they can't (laughs) pay me or anything. So I'm like, I'm like shoestringing it together, but like, I'm also basically just functioning with like, um, you know, whatever I can from the community around us. Um. The neighborhood around us in terms of like trying to get what i need um to keep working on like can i recreate the cure under these circumstances can i create enough of it to be functional etc right mm-hmm. and then the two edges that i took are um the counselor um so i know the um vice president of oh dear i'm not gonna be able to pronounce this correctly i'm sure Askelupian laboratories and they are the medical uh, company that went in and basically created the quarantine zones and started trying to fix things. And so I know that the vice president um, of that company basically issued some orders that resulted in a lot of people just getting murdered by riot squads, like as they closed the border on the quarantine <laughs> zones. So that's my blackmail material. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I goodness. got dirt. And um, and then I also took the Vice Squad. Um, so I know um, I have connections in the uh, Vice Squad and the police department, um, which is another way that I actually get 
um, some of the equipment and stuff that I need because when police pick up stuff from like underground operations or something, like if it's something that I'm looking for and that I need, they'll just give it to me. So Sergeant Smith is my contact there. And um, I think that I um, I saved his sister, not from the plague, because I haven't quite gotten that cure functional again yet. It's really difficult under these circumstances. <laughs> um but yeah. uh but like I, I was able to to f- fix something else life threatening um for him. So, you know, he's he believes in, you know, me actually being an effective doctor and being worthy of like getting this equipment and stuff instead of it landing back and getting tagged and just landing at the police office nice. where it doesn't do any good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they're like by supply chain of random stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. Sorry, I didn't connect up with the safe awesome. house at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Would be weird to put a clinic like right oh, under the club or something. So. <laughs> it's across the street. Right. It's okay. It's across the street. It might be across the street. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. The last part, which I lost on the screen because I had um, I, I'm using I'm using so many windows in a 15 inch <laughs> monitor. I missed a piece. Yeah. Um, the last part, which is actually written yeah. into the sheet, is um. Or I'm sorry, the second to last mm-hmm. part is upgrades. Um, so each operator begins the game with one upgrade. That upgrade is actually listed right on your sheet. And then upgrades are things that like as you um, as you play through the game, you can get additional upgrades. They're like cybernetic nice. implants. Um, so I think on mine, I start with the following. The secure wet space implant, the headspace implant. I think that's what we mm-hmm. all get. And then I have muscle and bone stabilizers. Your bones are laced with a carbon steel alloy and your muscles are reinforced with filaments and medical gel injectors. You may ignore up to three harm from any crash or crush or fall. Allows you to jump from a three-story building with little to no danger. No wonder you can parkour like Mm -hmm. a crazy person. You look at Uh me like I'm crazy. (laughs) We're like, why can't you just jump that? What's wrong with you? Just jump off the building! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I get, um, medical suite, which is, um, an implant and it gives healing and it's inconspicuous. Um, so it's a drug storage, vital monitor, medical injectors, synth skin sprayers, and I can use it to treat myself or someone else. So once per session, I can use, um, the drugs that my medical suite provides to lower any stress track to zero, Mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome. Yeah. My Mm -hmm. upgrade is wired reflexes. So I'm fast, precise, and my reaction time is greatly enhanced because of the electronic stimulants applied directly to my brain. And side effects include being really hyperactive and annoying. Oh, and I always go first in any situation where time is of the essence. Uh, And I can ignore the reload Mm -hmm. constraint on gear I am using. Yeah, especially considering I come with a uh, shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Nice. I have um, pain editor. It's implant and inconspicuous. Um, so when you take this implant, pick a stress track. You can no longer be taken out by feedback on this stress track when you take harm. Wow. That's powerful. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> yep. All right. Awesome. And then the last part is um, credits. You have credits listed under your starting gear, and then you could uh, right. you know, use money to buy stuff. Um, if you need anything else, I have one credit, so I don't think I'm going to be buying too much to start the game with. Um, but I'm I'm pretty happy. Charger is um, Charger is full of regret and, ven- and ready for vengeance. Yes. Yeah, I started I with it. two credits over here. Yeah, awesome. I have one. I have three, but I don't know that there's anything that I necessarily need to add right now. So awesome. We have uh, very cool. We have a team. Yeah, we do. We made, we made some, some people. people. We. Made some death. <laughs> we have some regrets. Yeah, I, I, I did too. A little bit success. I know Washington. Washington, Washington, that was the one that. Uh, oh, okay. Washington, sweet Washington. <laughs> R.I.P. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's always with us. Yep. Right. Like, right. There's always a it's piece almost, of Washington. It, with I don't us know if it's better time. or worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean. All of his, all of all of Washington's dad jokes are still in, right. like in the yeah. shared consciousness. Oh man, I mean, you think mm-hmm. about us. What about his kids? I mean, really. Right. I mean, we got to do right by them <laughs> yeah. as well. Just oh. <laughs> wow. And that and that and that is making oh, characters wow. in headspace. 
Yeah. Yes. To the pain. <laughs> right, right? All right. So we'll go. Because normally the, after this, we would do our backgrounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we did that. It is that's part, part of it. Of this Yay. Game already. Mm-hmm. Yay. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our Headspace character creation episodes. Uh, Phil, do you want to remind everybody where they can find you and what you are up to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can always find me on the two podcasts that I do weekly. So you can find me at Pandas Talk Games and you can find me uh, at the Misdirected Mark podcast, which actually broadcasts live on Twitch at uh, Tuesdays, 8.45 p.m. Eastern, 6.45 p.m. the Queen's time. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can find uh, stuff that I write at uh, gnomes2.com. Uh, you can find games that I design at encodeddesigns.com. And uh, you can find me uh, primarily on Twitter at DNA Phil. Awesome. And how about yourself, Senda? Well, uh, you can find me personally on Twitter at I-D-E-L-L-A-M-I-T-H-L-Y-N-N-D. And I know that's totally unspellable, but there it is. Um, You can also find me on She's a Super Geek, which you can catch on Twitter at Sasgeek Podcast or just Sasgeek.com. And you can find me, of course, on Pandas Talking Games, which is on the Misdirected Mark Network, um, or on Twitter at Pandas Talk Games. And you can also find my articles on Gnome Stew. And you can find um, my first game, Love and Justice, on DriveThruRPG or on Encoded Designs. <laughs> and anywhere else that you are, you're hanging out, like, do you want to tell us like, where you stop and get coffee in the morning? That was or... pretty concise! <laughs> you don't even no, know! You did a great job. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you, did a, you did a fantastic <laughs> job. It's lovely. Um, well, thank you both for joining us. And thank you to everyone listening. We will be back again next week. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Warda. Warda is an original fantasy actual play podcast created by Ali Grauer and Drew Marzieski. It's one part Game of Thrones, two parts Downton Abbey, served on the rocks with a twist of Agatha Christie. Discover magic, mystery, and more than a little sociopolitical commentary along the way. The city holds thousands of stories. What will yours be?